So I've gotten some good emails from you guys lately, which I appreciate, including one from a, from a person in the analytics community who, you can check him out in the video description, brought this player, Jamar Johnson, to my attention. I hadn't watched him before, and he was wondering what I thought of him because he's a pretty polarizing player. People are really far apart on him, including in NFL circles. And so Indiana, disguise-based defense, they do a lot of stuff on the back end. Jamar Johnson's a really interesting player. He's not a tremendous athlete, but he's a functional athlete. He's actually a really good athlete. He's got some tackling problems. We're going to try to diagnose those and go into why he misses tackles, which ones he misses, and what he can do to get better at the next level. Because if he can correct that, this guy has good starter traits, and I think he's actually pretty underrated. Here's a play from the first quarter of the Ohio State game. Jamar Johnson gets a pick from a middle field safety alignment. Uh, Johnson really actually had an interesting quote, and I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. He basically just said that, um, a lot of the teams that Fields was playing prior to this game were kind of coming out in vanilla coverages and kind of showing where they were. And when that happened, it was easy for Fields. Like, he knew where the holes were. And you can kind of pick them apart that way. Indiana played a lot of disguised coverages, um, but not necessarily on this play in terms of the actual shell of, of the play. So the nickel corner is going to come on the blitz. And Fields... Johnson looks like he's flipping this way. The seam, working the seam right here. So Field's going to check Johnson initially. And then like a typical cover three beater is going to be something that like works the seam, stresses the, the safety, especially if he's on the far hash. And there's that open window. Johnson's able to come back. Now, why is that? This is a good interception on Johnson, too, because he looks really good in phase. He looks good in his pedal. Um, and he's pretty fluid overall. You can see Johnson right here, number 22. Now Fields sees him, and now he's waiting on the seam to come open. You're not going to fully see it here. He doesn't really hold him after that. It's not like a quick trigger, because if you go back to the other angle, seam's going to be open here. Fields still waiting on that. Doesn't hold Johnson, Johnson comes over to make the interception. I think part of this is on fields, and I think part of this is a, a good play on Johnson, but they definitely did a lot of disguise coverages in this game. All right, so here's the play where he's playing. This is, he gets a second interception here. I think this is a little situational as well. Um, he's playing middle of the field. Fields over here. Runs into some bodies. Ohio State's up pretty big at this point. He tries to sail it. And it's picked off, but fumbles the ball. That's a tough one. Here's a play of Johnson and deep half responsibilities. Right here. Corner over here, underneath responsibilities. Johnson, as soon as he sees the quarterback orient himself towards the left side, look over here as his first read. He's making a beeline, breaks up the pass. And you'll see it as well on the other angle. So he's triggering now. Now, obviously, that's his responsibility. But I think he's quick to trust his eyes as soon as he sees, okay, this is where the ball may be going. Good pass breakup. It looks like he almost got the pick. Let's see it. wasn't in bounds, but man, that's a good play. That's trusting your instincts on the football field. There was no hesitation in that play. And that's a fantastic play. And so when we talk about like play speed versus like time speed, his time speed is going to be okay, but I think his play speed is always going to be a bit faster than that. You really like to see something like that. So there are plays like these where you can look and say, okay, it's a bad pass by the quarterback. Johnson does technically lock into this pick. But good players, just, like ball production is more than just luck. And Johnson's got a ton of it. And part of this is how I, like how he cues the quarterback. And he's pretty reactive to even these types of bad passes that you could say, this is a lucky play. Which is pretty true. 
But if you look over the course of time, there's more than just luck that contributes to some of these plays. Johnson's a player who I think is actually going to be pretty good against tight ends. Here is a pass breakup that he has on an inbreaker, where I think it shows off some of his length, some of his like recovery ability, because if you're going to play him in the box, you got to be comfortable with him against bigger players. So you like the angle that he takes, good hand-eye coordination. You see this a lot with players who do have ball production. A lot of times they have good reflexes. Good natural like hand-eye coordination. We can just look at that ability in isolation, and I think Johnson does. But he's also got the size. He's over six feet tall. He's almost 200 pounds. So that's really good timing right there to break up the pass. I think you're going to be comfortable with him on some bigger players. Here's a play that the tight end makes the catch on, but I think Johnson actually has some pretty good anticipation on this in terms of like when he reacts and how he tries to play this. His so tight end's going to run a... Intermediate in-breaking route. Johnson jumps on it pretty quickly from an off-coverage alignment. And the tight end still makes the catch. I like what Johnson does in terms of going for like the bicep area in terms of trying to get this down just before the ball is getting there. We're going to see this one more time. I think he can cause a good amount of pass breakups in this situation if this is where you go. I like how he times the play, tries to pull that down, but the tight end does make a good catch here. But I think he, from an off-coverage alignment, I think once he notices the tight end starting to break inside, I think he does a good job at the angle that he takes, how he tries to break up the pass. He's not going to go trying to get around the tight end here. He's not going to get too aggressive too early. Tight end still makes a good play, but I actually like this play from Johnson. And Johnson's got some punch to his game here. Watch him blow up this block over here to the tight end. Almost get on the tackle, too. But yeah, he's got some punch to his game. I think he does a good job like taking on blocks, I think, if you move him down into the box. Because um, you're probably going to want to have him as like a nickel safety or a two-high safety. I don't think you're going to want him as like a single-field guy. But I think he's going to be just fine like taking on blocks being physical with blockers, not just in terms of tackling, um, but in terms of like taking on blocks. Johnson also shows signs and underneath zone coverage of like zone awareness or just like overall field. Part of this is like reading the quarterback, but also like pay attention to where, uh, when he's in like an underneath zone, where, do, re, where receivers will go and how he adjusts the route, even when he's not exactly keying them. Part of that is like, reading the eyes of the quarterback, but I think he does a good job of cutting off some of these underneath windows, taking away the most inner threat, and adjusting so it's there. He's not completely hedging, though. Good zone awareness, good overall feel. Part of this is keying the quarterback, but just pay attention to how he will like adjust his routes. Not his routes. How he adjusts himself when routes are behind him. I think he does a good job at this. If a player is completely oblivious, sometimes they will just sit at a certain spot, regardless of their overall responsibility, and the zones aren't really going to be like flexible in that way. This is how you add like some flexibility to the zone, and you can actually like cover more ground. And I think it helps like the integrity of the defense when you can do this on a consistent basis, which Johnson does. Deep play, broken play, Fields breaks the sack, and Fields is going to take off. Now Johnson is over here right now. So he's just seen Fields take off. And Fields not in, I mean, he's like bending his run path. And so it looks like, oh, miscalculated angle. But from this viewpoint, and you're going to see Johnson come over late. He's got help over here. And Johnson, like, you're not going to get on tackling form really with plays at this speed that are essentially broken plays. And so Fields at full speeds, you realistically think he's going to bend this back inside based on the trajectory of his other run, the rest of the run path. But he pulls a spin move out of nowhere. You cannot reasonably expect this when you're looking at Fields. I know he did it earlier in the game, but on a play with this much momentum, and playing him outside in, because the worst thing that you could do 
Let's play this two flat. Fields bounces back outside, and he's going to truck this guy right here. And his help's there, too. So I'm not putting this one on Johnson. I, I think in terms of like the angle that he's going to take, I think it's generally good. And this is a broken play anyways. And that's what we were talking about. Johnson over here, right side nickel now. He might have some more power in his game. He's going to be giving Teague, I know it's late in the game, but he's giving him some problems in pass protection. Getting a good amount of blowback for the sack right here. Good collision. Run himself through. And the finish. You like to see it. This is a sign of an athlete who's fluid and coordinated. And when you analyze a lot of his movement skills and coverage, he's not super twitchy. Like, he probably runs in the four fives. But functionally, he's very good side to side. His change of direction, start stop ability is very good, especially when he has to go backwards. When he has to turn and run, it's really good. And he just has like a he has a lot of maneuverability, and so I think he plays faster and better in coverage than a straight line speed would suggest. And I think his range is better than people would suggest. And even though this is a blitz play, you see those same traits on display here. If you like Johnson as like a nickel safety, this is one of the plays that you like because I think when he brings the fight to you. And you've seen this on a couple plays earlier. Um, downhill, off the edge against an A-gap run, and he makes the tackle. Good job. Indiana is in a cover two look. Johnson, bottom of your screen right here. It's going to be in a deep half. You get a two by two formation, and Johnson's going to be dropping, dropping. He's going to see over here vertical route to that side, and the pass completion over here against the bottom of your screen. Now if you look back at that again, I think this kind of shows a few things. One, no disguise look here. Johnson is definitely, he keys the quarterback a lot. Obviously when zone coverage you're watching the quarterback, but I think he plays to his instincts a lot, and I think this can open up some lanes. If the quarterback doesn't exactly do what his body is suggesting, drifting left in the pocket, that's when Johnson decides to pick up the vertical route and vacate over here. So these are only really the two things you're worried about in the cover two, because the corner, it's not really going to be, he's going to be stuck between these two responsibilities. And he's not going to drop to a depth over here. So this is going to leave this wide open. He's going to get the shoe train tackle. So I think there is some possibilities for, Johnson definitely plays the odds a lot in coverage, and that is a lot of what coverage is, kind of identifying threats. The worst thing, because there's less than a minute here, other context, there's less than a minute until the end of the half. The worst thing, especially against the cover two look, is this safety widens out too much, and this vertical route catches too far upfield. And so I do understand Johnson playing that route. I'm okay with this. I would just want to see him leave this a little bit earlier. But again, this is somewhat of a natural beater to the coverage they're in. If you can split the safeties, you could get a vertical route downfield. I think that kind of shows like how eye manipulation by quarterbacks can uh, cause them to guess wrong at certain points. But the context of when this happened, this still isn't the worst thing in the world. And naturally, there still would be a window for the quarterback to get this in there, even if he didn't take the hedge to the vertical route as much. Indiana sends their outside corners on blitzes a lot more than most teams, so the safeties are going to have different responsibilities in the defense. He's going to want them to play like one side of the field in. So he just wanted me to get to his inside. Let's up a little space here, but as soon as the receiver... Flashes his hands. So he lets up some space initially. Plays the ball through the hands. Doesn't go too early on that, and part of that is he's a little behind right there. But I think he does a good job overall of breaking up that pass. 
So for Johnson's attacking problem, we kind of need to figure out, is it based on like wrap strength? Is it based on technique? Is it based on play strength? Um, or is it based on like the internal calculus? Like your brain cannot identify angles, which I think that one's probably the worst one to have um, because you're going to take bad pursuit angles and you're just going to really not be a great space player and probably be a liability. So Johnson's going to be middle of the field. Alave, bottom of your screen, is going to run a slant. He's going to get the ball. And at first it looked like Johnson was a little tentative there. But when you slow it down and watch it from this angle, I actually really like what he does. Um, like he plays with good leverage because we've got him in the middle of the field. With the slant, the trailing corner is going to be on the outside and a little bit further upfield. The worst thing that you could do right now is get beat backside because that's probably his touchdown. And so I like how he positions himself in this way because it allows him to play to his help. If he, in the event that Johnson missed the tackle here, because this is kind of like a, this is a lot of space to deal with. Alave is obviously a good player. And if you play this wrong and let him get back outside of you, this could really be a rough play. But I think his brain is good. I, I think he's smart, and I think his brain's pretty good at like calculating these angles of, of like how to play to leverage. So I don't think he has the worst problem with his tackling. Because he plants himself outside. And sticks him right there. All right, so here's another missed tackle. A little context of the play. So Johnson's going to be over here. He's going to shed a block during this play um, with a little spin move here from the tight end instead of just completely taking on. And the running back, Connor Hayward, is a pretty big back. It's actually Cameron Hayward, his brother. Uh, six Listed six foot, 230 pounds. Good contact balance player. And so in this situation, Johnson's not going to go for the actual wrap. He's just going to go leading with his shoulder. I kind of call these like recoil tackles. Um, and he's he's close to the sideline anyway, so I'm not as concerned about the decision whether he's going to wrap or whether he's going to go for the shoulder first. He actually gets him at a pretty good point. But Hayward does expect this, leans into it, and he stays upright for a couple more yards. All right, we're going to go over two tackling plays that where he missed a tackle or did something wrong in the in the run game. Uh, that I think were kind of costly in this game, even though he made a lot of great plays. So backside too high coverage, I think this is kind of, it's a little bit of an effort thing, and it's a little bit of like, he's assuming that his teammates are going to make the tackle, and he's the backside safety, so he just doesn't, he doesn't take the pursuit angle you want as like kind of like the safety net. You want to see him get like a little bit more upfield, in the event that this does hit, because if he gets this hole clean, which he does, he's got a lot of acceleration. You're not going to be able to catch him. And I'd say that Johnson is maybe like a 4-5-0 flat guy um, to be determined. But he's not like a guy who's got serious, serious burners to where he's going to be able to, to not be in the right position and then catch Teague on this type of play. And you can see... He gets close at the end, but that this is a pursuit angle thing, and this is assuming that your teammates are going to make the play and not getting in the right position to be a safety net. And now on the next play, they motion Trey Sermon into the backfield. Johnson's right here. He's going to come down closer to the line of scrimmage. And Sermon hits that hole pretty hard. And I'm just not fully sure. This is a little bit of like an aggressiveness thing too. I don't know if he thought sure. I don't know if he thought Sermon was gonna like bend this back inside. Just kind of falls down. I don't think he fully lays out for that tackle attempt. I'm not fully sure why. But that's another big game in the run game. 
that's the one part of his game that kind of concerns you a bit because um, I like a lot of other parts of his game, but in terms of uh, assessing his value, especially against bigger, stronger athletes, that's the one thing that's kind of holding me up a bit. So diagnosing Johnson's tackling problem, what is it? So he's breaking down kind of a weird angle. Only wraps with one arm. Decent backs are going to break that. This is a form thing. Is it a little bit of an aggressiveness thing? Sure. It's not an angles thing. He doesn't wrap up. That's the problem. You see so many plays where he just lunges with one arm and it gets broken. And it'll fall off. And players will get extra yards. He's got to fix this form. He's got to fix this tendency. Because he's not strong enough to overcome, like, inefficiencies in his tackling form. And this shows up a good amount. I think this is the number one culprit for why he misses tackles. He just doesn't wrap up. Does it with one arm. Now, we're going over a ton of the tackling problems because I think diagnosing the problem is definitely a big thing. And the Ohio State game is... I think it carries more weight than a lot of games because of the level of competition and how interesting it was scheme-wise as well. So he identifies this play pretty early. As soon as he's triggering, as soon as this hole opens up. So I think he can go low a lot of times. And I think if he was a little bit later for this, I think it would be a bit of an issue. But it's kind of like beating someone to the punch. He IDs this so quickly that Teague's not really able to react to him in the hole. And he upends Teague. So I think this is a good play. I think sometimes he has this tackling approach instead of a wrap-up approach. And you'll see wraps in other situations. But I think he has this approach almost as a way to compensate for size. So his run fill, his pursuit angle is good on this play. I think the reason he misses it is he's coming right around here. He doesn't fully get his wrap in. He only really gets around that left thigh. And he doesn't get his other hand through. And so he just kind of falls off. And I, I, I don't think, I think this is partially related to like your wrap strength during your tackle and also how he wraps you because I don't think he fully gets his hand around where he wants to. Because if you're coming from this angle, you've got a lot of like momentum towards the sideline in this direction. You're probably going to need to get more than just that thigh. Because there's really only one anchor point that you have. You need to get the back arm around somehow, or get that front arm around and almost like try to reach the other thigh. Bottom of your screen right here, number two. He's going to take this route to the flat. He's got the wrap problem, but it's not fully related to, is he a weak tackler? He's got poor form and he's got other issues. Once he wraps you up, he's usually pretty good. Is he super strong in terms of players are never going to break this? No, but he's not weak. He's not that small either. He's almost 200 pounds. When he puts it together, even when he doesn't have momentum, it's a lot different. So thank you guys for watching this video. I think Johnson is a very interesting player, a good example of selection bias in the NFL draft. There's hundreds of players. Not everyone's going to be brought to your attention. I think Johnson's a player that outperform my expectations for him, especially when you kind of put it as he's a player who's not a tremendous straight, on, straight line athlete and has some tackling issues. But overall, I think Johnson's really smart. I think he can play in some interesting roles and give you some flexibility on the back end with what he can do at the NFL level. Give him a little time to develop, add some strength, improve that technique. But I think that he's a player who 
has, I think, a bit more potential. I'm on the higher side of where people see him. And I think it's all a matter of, can he get there? Because I don't have any issues with the, like how his brain calculates angles and his ability to take on blocks. I think he can develop some of these some of these issues. And there's different dimensions of tackling that he's better or worse at. But overall, he's an interesting player. I think he's a mid to late third round grade for me. Um, Indiana's got their pro day on April 2nd, so what he tests will influence that a little bit. But overall, I think he's a good player. I think he's a candidate for my top 100, and I like him a good amount. And I like this defense a lot, too. I don't usually watch college football this closely during the season. I don't get my tape till later. Indiana was good for a lot of reasons. Jamar was definitely a part of that. And this defense is really interesting. And I think it tells me a lot about what you can put on this plate at the next level.